because we want to attract community leaders like yourselves who work directly with the Latino community. Our aim is to improve communication uh, within our Spanish-speaking community in preparation for, uh, during, and after disasters occur. We know that the future will see us facing many disasters, and these may include our natural and human-caused situations such as floods, fires, earthquakes, terrorist events, extreme uh, weather conditions, and power outages, uh, just to name a few. We also know that our ability to deal with these disasters effectively will depend in large part on the positive relationships uh, that we have developed with the Office of Emergency Services and, of course, our great partner organizations. Today's summit will offer an opportunity for you to discuss and make specific recommendations on how our organization can more effectively do emergency preparedness outreach in the Latino community and deal with disasters when they occur. Your focused participation today in our breakout sessions is very important to us and is very much appreciated. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to thank two very important groups of individuals. First, I would like to thank my board of directors for its leadership and passion in promoting emergency preparedness in the Latino community. Our board consists of seven members. Four of those are community advocates and past presidents of the Latino Emergency, uh, or Hispanic Leadership Council, I should say. And those include uh, uh, Sally Ayala Perez, Yamalet Valladolid, Albino Erizari, and myself. Rounding on our board, we also have community advocate and radio personality Elaine Harlan, mm -hmm. Modesto City Schools Board of Trustee, member and president-elect of the California School Board Association, Cindy Marks, and our county's Director of Legislative Affairs and Communications, uh, David Jones. All of our board members have given of themselves unselfishly in promoting our goals and objectives. And I thank them for their exceptional leadership, their passion, their professionalism, and extreme dedication. Thank you. Thank you. They do a tremendous uh, volunteer job and they do it extremely well. So I really appreciate working with you. Uh, you're great people. And I might say that uh, I think all of our members have been on board now for a minimum, as board, uh, board of directors for a minimum of about five years anyhow. And uh, they're consistently there and super supportive of uh, the efforts we're involved in. The other group I would like to highlight uh, this afternoon is our summit participants. Many of our participants today come from agencies that have been with us for a long time. A lot of them uh, since the beginning, about six years ago. And these include El Concilio, and we already introduced uh, Mr. Jose Rodriguez, and I certainly want to thank him for his wonderful support. The Stanislaus County Chief Executive Office has been great to work with and the Board of Supervisors. And we certainly appreciate all their support and assistance. We have two of our supervisors uh, here today, and that's absolutely impressive and appreciated. We have the Office of Emergency Services, and uh, you heard uh, Gary Hinshaw uh, talk about our relationship over the years. It's been a very positive relationship indeed, and greatly appreciated. Advancing Vibrant Communities has been one of our key organizations, and I certainly want to thank uh, Pastor Douglas for uh, his tremendous support uh, in having staff from his organizations participate in uh, our organization, and then that's none other than Elaine Harlan, and she's done a wonderful job in working with us uh, throughout the years. We have organizations, of course, like the Latino Community Roundtable, Resources Agency for Independent Living, DRAIL. We have a great representation from them today, uh, and we appreciate that. We have the Hispanic Leadership Council, Modesto City Schools, Lucindy mm -hmm. primarily, but we have other members, of course, of the uh, schools attend our meetings, uh, which are held once a month. We have representation uh, from uh, HealthNet, representation from Modesto Irrigation District, Turlock Irrigation District, and the Status Loss uh, County Chapter of the American Red Cross. So I probably left some, uh, some of the organizations out, and if I did, I certainly apologize for that. 
Well, you know, and many of our, these organizations that are here today, I might add, the ones I just mentioned, and we thank them for their unwavering support. We also have other organizations with us today that uh, will hopefully uh, sign up as uh, future members with us. Uh, I might mention, uh, and I think this went out in the literature we uh, recently distributed, uh, we have uh, in excess of actually uh, 85 uh, organizations that have tied in uh, with this summit today. That is just super impressive. So from about 25 organizations to 85 organizations, that is indeed a, a big jump, and uh, we thoroughly appreciate uh, your being with us today. That said, uh, how fitting it is for us today to be able to host this summit with approximately 130 attendees. So that's an impressive number. And we're doing this during a very special time of the year. September is National Hispanic uh, Month, which uh, started on September the 15th. And not only that, it's uh, also uh, National Preparedness Month. In the area of preparedness, already this year, America has faced a severe drought, devastating tornadoes, floods, severe freezes, West Nile virus outbreaks, a recent hurricane, and other calamities, both natural and human cause. So it follows then that we must coordinate, collaborate, coalesce, and communicate with our partner organizations. These include the County's Office of Emergency Service, FEMA, CalEMA, public uh, safety organizations, nonprofits, faith-based organizations, other, other governmental organizations. Not, uh, I mentioned uh, nonprofits already. Uh, private sector organizations as well, those are all included and uh, need to be obviously a part uh, to make uh, it a success for us to move on in addressing emergency services uh, in, the, in the, our community. But we were founded back in the fall of uh, 2005 as a Latino Emergency Communications Project. Our goal at that time was basically to open up a, a door vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Office of Emergency Services so uh, we could be in contact with that particular department and have direct communication from them so members of our community could be more effective in reaching out to all sectors in the Latino community. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, we of course uh, became the Latino Emergency Council and basically at that time we started or, uh, including more organizations in the community as, a, as our partners. And I already covered of course who those partners are in, in large part. So from uh, a project, we essentially evolved into uh, a council with a fully constituted uh, seven-member uh, board of directors, and that's basically where we stand at this time. The founding organizations of uh, the Latino Emergency Council included uh, representatives uh, from the Hispanic uh, Leadership Council, El Concilio, and Stanislaus County. Myself, Balbino Arizari, Jose Rodriguez and David Jones represented those organizations. As an organization, of course, we continue to mature, and at this time, we are seeking 501c3 nonprofit status with IRS, and we're pretty uh, darn close to achieving that status. Hopefully, within the next month, uh, we will know if uh, we've been approved by IRS to become a nonprofit. Our premise for funding the Latino Emergency Council stemmed from the fact that we had a large, high Latino population in Stanislaus County. 25.6% uh, of our population in 2000 uh, was of Hispanic origins, Latino origins. 40.6% as of 2011. And there was also a general belief among Latino leaders at that time that better outreach in the Latino community was essential during times of disaster. We were aware that social and economic conditions, community isolation, cultural sensitivities, a general distrust for governmental authorities, and language considerations were factors promoting vulnerability when it came to emergency preparedness in the Latino community. We were also concerned that many Latinos were, quote, off the grid when it came to receiving emergency-related information, where they had reduced 
telephone access and therefore could benefit from the outreach our organization could provide. So basically it was with this background in mind that our organization was founded. More recent census data continues to support the need for our organization. For example, Modesto alone, or in Modesto alone, they had like 40% of Latinos uh, that were reported as of a 19, uh, 2009 census estimate that uh, spoke Spanish as a first language. In 2010, census designated places like Bret Hart, Bystrom, Grayson, the Monterey track, uh, Park Track, Park Line, or Park Line, uh, Shackleford, and Wesley showed Latino representation ranging from 76.2% to 96%. Therefore, it is in designated places like these that have uh, higher numbers of Latinos that speak Spanish as a first language for emergency preparedness is so crucial and uh, so needed. Or stated differently, it is in designated places like these where our organization must focus and provide education. More communication, therefore, is obviously needed in these areas. Of course, schools, healthcare organizations, and other groups will also play an important role in helping us connect with residents in these areas. So what have we been doing uh, since our founding? Since our inception, we have distributed more than 10,000 pieces of emergency preparedness information, and this information has gone out in both English and Spanish within the uh, Latino community to build self-sufficiency in the event of health outbreaks and other disasters. Recently, for example, we had the opportunity to partner with two of our organizations. Uh, those organizations were the uh, Delta Blood Bank and uh, Kaplan College, uh, they had a couple of uh, community events, and uh, we were out there distributing our literature. And we have other organizations uh, within LEC that uh, help us on an ongoing basis get the information out to the community. One of those organizations uh, has been Drail, and I certainly want to thank uh, uh, Ruben Villalobos for uh, his uh, leadership on behalf of Drail in not only getting out their information relative to the uh, services they provide, but our information as well. So when it comes to partner organizations, this is certainly one way uh, your organization, and hopefully we'll sign up uh, a lot of organizations, additional organizations today, so one way you guys can help us out by distributing the information on emergency preparedness that uh, we put together. We do have packets at the back of the room that contain this information, and I certainly encourage you to pick up the information and if you need us uh, to go out to your organization and distribute uh, that information, we would be very happy to do that. We've also focused on leveraging partnerships to bring the greatest value to our community. For example, we created a partnership with the Medusa Regional Fire Authority, which is a lead agency in the county for the Community Emergency Response Team Program, or CERT Program. When the Spanish language uh, CERT program uh, first developed a few years ago, recruitment was indeed very challenging for the uh, leaders of that particular program. Initially, they had like five individuals uh, that uh, were enrolled that excuse me, spoke Spanish, but uh, that number has certainly uh, gone up uh, uh, to an excess of uh, 100 individuals that have participated and graduated in the CERT program. And this is a 25-hour course of instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it takes a commitment, indeed, from individuals to uh, move themselves away from their families for that duration. That's not done in the two days. This training is done over a period of uh, a week. So it's a, a real commitment of time. And uh, I'm certainly very proud of uh, those individuals that have attended this class in Spanish. And uh, I'm certainly very thankful to, uh, for the uh, uh, fire authority uh, that has made it possible for our uh, representatives to attend. CERT is a great example then of our uh, philosophy, which is our desire to give people the tools they need to be empowered. CERT gets you trained to take uh, care of your family and your neighborhood. It also trains people to respond in a more impactful way as disaster workers, and that's 
the main idea behind uh, our CERT training, to get them involved as disaster workers when disasters occur. Our board members have also participated in media and strategic planning uh, uh, training uh, with the idea of building uh, leadership skills to more effectively promote emergency preparedness throughout the community. And I personally at this time would like to thank uh, David Jones because he has been the one that was responsible for providing this labor-intensive uh, excellent training to uh, our board of directors and of course as you know David Jones is a, a member of our board uh, but he not only uh, comes to the meeting but he's hands-on in terms of uh, uh, helping us to develop uh, especially in the area of strategic planning and that's uh, certainly a very important uh, uh, component of uh, who we are because we need to be better prepared to make this organization indeed a viable uh, organization and David has helped us uh, tremendously in that regard as well as with uh, media training. So thank you, David, for uh, your wonderful efforts. Thank you. Thank you. We have also assisted the Office of Emergency Service uh, during the uh, H1N1 swine uh, flu outbreak. We've had multiple uh, heat emergencies. We've been involved in that, uh, the West Nile virus, and uh, some cold weather issues that we've been involved in. We have also participated and assisted in disaster exercises, community emergency uh, preparedness events, and multiple community events throughout the county. We also recently partnered with the Office of Emergency Services HIPLINK Emergency Notification System, and Chief uh, Henshaw spoke about that program uh, uh, previously. And uh, this is a system that uh, we uh, strongly believe will improve our ability to communicate more effectively with our key partners uh, during emergency situations. This past year, members of our board also uh, visited Washington, D.C. and Oakland and had the opportunity to connect with FEMA representatives. These connections, we are confident, will prove beneficial for our respective organizations. Locally, we will also be working with the United Way uh, here in Stanislaus County to help them put together a cadre of support our volunteers in support of the 211 information and referral program. In fact, I'm going to be meeting uh, with the director of uh, United Way uh, in the next week, and we're going to be talking about how the Latino Emergency Council can put together a group of Spanish-speaking individuals or other individuals that want to uh, help, don't have to be Spanish speaking. Uh, so uh, the services provided under the county's 211 system, or United Way's uh, 211 system, can be uh, more effective. When Stanislaus County presented us with our Effective Partnership Recognition Award last year, they stated that we were an outstanding example of a community based, grassroots effort to educate and empower the community. Today, I am happy to uh, report that this honor has been reinforced by us just receiving notification that we have been uh, conferred another very special recognition. And this is none other than the uh, Challenge Award that's conferred annually by the California State Association of Counties. That, by the way, is our highest award. By the way, Stanislaus County was but only one of three counties in the state to receive this prestigious award in the 200,000 to 700,000 population category. And statewide, there were only 11 challenge awards presented. We are humbled by these two awards, and the recognition is truly appreciated. This recognition, of course, would not have been possible had it not been for the excellent leadership of our board of directors and also for the wonderful support of our many partner agencies. I therefore would like to take this opportunity to commend our board and partner agencies for their outstanding leadership and hard work. So how about uh, let's give uh, those folks a nice round of applause. <laughs> As we move into the future, we are committed to developing new partnerships with community organizations so that we can better communicate with the Latino community. 
And that's really, in, in, in a sense, what this uh, conference or summit is all about today. Uh, yes, we've been in existence for six years. We've done some great work. But a lot of good work certainly lies ahead for our organization. And I, I truly believe we can achieve and, and meet the objectives of, of our organization if we include more organizations in our community and the county that have a tie-in with Latinos. Because we know disasters will occur. We know we're going to have emergencies. So when they, they do occur, we want to make sure that we have an impact and good communication with the Latinos. And that will happen by having your organization join us so we can tie in with you when disasters occur and we can do better outreach. So in essence, uh, to a very large extent, that's what this summit is all about today. I would like to thank you. We just have a beautiful uh, group of people today, diverse group. As I mentioned, uh, over 85 uh, different organizations, and David mentioned that too. And that's pretty darn impressive. So uh, I thank you for being here today. We do have applications uh, for membership with the LEC. They're located on your table. So uh, please uh, give uh, you know, serious consideration to uh, joining and working with us. And uh, I, I think we certainly have a, a bright future. And this, this is just a wonderful summit. And I'm so proud to be here today. And I thank you for your support. Mm -hmm.